Hello, and thank you for joining us in our new life series with Rav Dr. Michael Lyman. Hello, Dr. Lyman. Hello, Nitsa Mazuz. Hello. And here we've been talking lately about the new workplace. We want to learn new things that are connected to the place where we spend most of our hours of the day and most of our lives. The organizations that we work in, the people we live with, that we're in uh, relationships with, relationships of our organization with others, all the connections between us. And here, each time, we're getting to know the integral approach that Rev Lightman is teaching us. We get this or that insight that we will apply to our lives at a later stage. You're welcome to join us. It will be interesting, we promise. In the previous conversation, we started touching on the fact that in interactions that we can have between us, between people that work in a certain organization, we'll be able to reach new results, new feelings. This world will open us to us, a more advanced world from which we will be able to exist in a better manner. You spoke of all kinds of exercises, that if we want to develop them and get into them, deeper, but the point where we stop that maybe we'll t take off. You said that between people that begin the social interactions between them in the place where they work, you can reach a state where we will create between us, let's say we're a group of a few people, we'll create between us a common desire, a common mind that will be between everyone and belong to everyone. And with it, we'll be able to break through to levels of new achievement achievements, uh, everyone's blossoming as a team, and each of us personally. Nitsa, bring us into this place a bit more and we'll develop it. So first of all, let's differentiate between the wisdom of public, where everyone takes statistics, you take, um, ask a question, maybe even if most of the people don't know the answer, it turns out that the average gives a very good, precise answer. So this is collective intelligence. You're talking about something else. Yes, I'm talking about a different level of thinking. You're truly talking about creation through the correct connection between people. You're saying not a big group, six or even up to 10 people, who truly create a um, a common mind, a common area through which they can think about new ideas, solutions to conflicts. It can be a work tool. And you can even say that you won't be able to work without it. The th individualistic thinking will no longer bring the solution. And we see that we don't have solutions, only through this connection. And you started saying in the previous show what the conditions that are that we need to create between the participants so that this connection can happen. So you talked about dialogue, equality, the issue of empathy, the ability to feel the other. You explained it going inside someone and feeling them. This ability happens not just so it will be pleasant for us, that is for sure, but also th so that through that we will create this connection and with that we'll be able to begin thinking in a new way. A person sees that he's not capable of understanding the modern life on his own with his brain, that there's some kind of other behavior from our nature, from the general nature. And the fact that we're starting to connect between us, we're creating a new vessel that matches nature, that's closer to the general nature. The general nature that we spoke of, where it comes from, this little spark that broke out and created everything. And in this program of evolution, this program is always operating all the parts of the material, of the desire. And despite the desire breaking out to all different directions, at the same time, this one form is one power that closes everything together. We're learning it more and more from day to day. And, and um, science. So it turns out that what's happening with us 
but by beginning to connect between us, we're starting to feel more, understand this power that's controlling us, this nature that is general, that's closing us all in together, controlling us all equally. And if we create between us, by ourselves, such a force, we do it among ourselves with exercises that we buy with these exercises gradually, the new feeling and mind common. And in this way, we will understand what is driving us, what motivates us. Where do we have desires from? Where do other people have uh, desires from? And when we start to put these things together, through this combination that we start to feel between us, there is a desire coming together, a new desire, a new mind common mind that doesn't belong to anyone. Through this, we can feel the big nature surrounding us and what is wanted from us. We will be able to see future things. We will be able to anticipate what's happening what is coming through this tool. That's what we're missing. That's what we see. The European leaders get together to talk, and they can't do anything, even though they have to give a solution. They're not capable of it. And that's how it is in every situation, in every organization, not just these huge organizations, even the little ones, because we're all dependent on everyone. We could have uh, managed ourselves in the past, our business or something. Today, it's very difficult. We've lost our way. So in that, we build in ourselves, we make ourselves suited to the new conditions, to live properly in a healthy manner in the global world, because we're building the global vessel, the common vessel. Just like we're discovering, the entire world is closed off and global. This is how we are as well. We will look through this uh, common system and we'll know what to do. We spoke about the fact that we have to play, that we cancel our opinion. I cancel it. I think about the other who is important and greater and special. I want to flow with his opinion to be integrated with him, and he's also trying to be integrated with me. In this way, we're integrated in everyone, everyone within everyone in our circle. We do exercises that in which we try to appreciate one another. Everyone looks at the others and starts to talk about how great they are, how great they are, how smart they are, how special they are. And it's clear to us that it could all be a complete lie according to our inner opinion. But we're playing like little kids that are playing and trying to be like other people, but in that they truly acquire new characteristics. That's what I'm doing. So I look at a, the woman. And I say wonderful things about her, smart, understanding, uh, manages uh, to get everything done at home, at work, at life, her speed, success, everything. I raise a lot of things up in front of me. 
And the same way everybody talks about me, it helps us to rise above our opinion and see that there could truly be a completely different perspective of what I think, possibly, on the one hand. On the other hand, it allows the peace between us and co completion, complementary. We complement to each other. It helps us build the common vessel. We leave everything that has to do with ego and criticism of one another behind. And it doesn't matter who's in front of me. It could be people that don't really understand, and they might not be good people. They make lots of mistakes in life and work and cause great damage. And we know maybe they're not so organized. I leave all that stuff. I'm only talking about the good stuff, despite that I see things differently. And in that way, we have, make these exercises. These exercises are not for nothing. But rather, when we connect between us, in that we build a new level of our existence. And we need to understand that it's not possible for us to use our ego like we did in the past and see through it each time everyone in a negative manner in order to raise ourselves up. To feel myself as existing and controlling and respectful. Instead of that, I will see my existence that I am respected and that I'm special and the fact that I can appreciate other people despite all everything I see negatively in them. My ego, we spoke of the fact that we're not canceling the ego. My ego helps me to rise above it precisely the negative characteristics in it, that I rise above them. It's like I'm riding a wave. It's like I'm on a wave. And where it precisely is going up and breaking out, where it wants to criticize, I do the opposite. I'm like taking, copying it, the opposite copy of it. So instead of the ego, I'm now building a new format of life, a different life. If I have ego on the left side, I build precisely against it the form on the right, but the opposite. And then I have two forms. And I get used to being between them. I myself become independent from my natural ego that I was born with and that I was with, and I thought it was me. I move away from it, and I build something on the right-hand side, the positive way of connecting with people, in bestowal, love, connection. And then between them, I exist. In other words, I begin to be independent, neutral. I canceled in that the nature I was born with, that I did not choose, and the nature that was implanted in me by school, my parents, the media. And, but by copying it into the opposite form, I've actually neutralized it, and it no longer controls me, this nature. But rather, I'm between two. And this is already like two reigns with reins where I can lead myself to wherever I want. And this is how each of us sitting in a circle can operate, meaning we are here now, we're truly people, humans, that can control everything that's in us 
from that force giving birth to us, from that desire that's developed us throughout evolution and is bringing us to this new thing, and now we are riding on it. We are now becoming humans, that we're growing above it, and we're beginning to see forward in a healthy, non-dependent, in a way that we're not dependent on this force. How can we advance? How we can advance? And now we can build a new society, new relations. We can decide things in a manner that the previous state, nature, the previous way of thinking, money, respect, power, all those things don't control me. I can take my life, my time that I have to live here. I can be independent of it, above it, and, and run things and choose and see ahead of me completely different goals than what I was blown up with and this ego put inside me as the necessities that I need. So maybe I might even think of completely different values now. Let's say connection, social connection might become a very central issue for me. I may see that in the social connection I start to develop the form of a new society, new life, new way of uh, having fun new procedures at work and manufacturing and what people will want, new things. Maybe we are also creating things in our business that finish and, and that are finished. We don't need them anymore. And the new form where they'll start to connect, whether they like it or not, they will want different things. They will want things that belong to the con new connection between them. And then I will know what they want, how I can serve them, and in that way develop and succeed as a business owner. And the main thing is that in that we also we're in balance between ourselves and with all the rest of the parts of nature. And we get out of the crisis. We rise to a new level of existence. We reach a state where it's not just exercises, but it's really the new way of life. It's very hard to describe all the ways and shapes that we will feel and discover. But gradually, through these workshops, we'll talk about it and we'll see how we're changing, how our viewpoint is changing how in accordance with that we want to reorganize our company. And we'll truly see that this format succeeds. This is actually, since we're talking, I feel that actually you gave us, I need to understand to the end, you gave us the technology, maybe the central technology of the connection of unity between people. When you talked, we just need to understand that it's not just connection, a certain connection between people, it's our entire development happen as a result of the changed connections between us. There was the period of slavery. That was a type of communication between people, connection. Then there were the medieval days and feudalism, capitalism. Now it's the modern times, postmodern. All our existence, all a person's existence, was in the change of connection between them. Meaning we here are exactly in the same flow, in the same direction, in the same wave frequency, where we get stuck and feel a crisis, and in that, 
In this exercise, we will fix this, the crisis and move forward to our development. So, because we're, this exercise that you gave us is so central, and when you spoke about it, I suddenly remembered that lots of people, we had like circles where we gave compliments to each other, but we never really understood what it does. We never had that kavanah. We had this intention, so how can we use it properly? How can we take it one step forward? It turns out that there's the theories and clips. It's like we did it, but it was very external. That we didn't even know what its uh, purpose was. But now I started to understand, but there's still plenty to understand. What is the purpose of this whole, this whole thing you described, inner change? So even when you do this exercise where everyone compliments the other, the fact that he's complimenting the other He's already, it's already helping him get out of himself, right? Yes. He's building the second side. He's building a copy of himself. And then that becomes really independent, independent in a way that he manages his character. And he can already connect in a new way. So I want to take the central technology and break it down to details in a manner that will understand how to go through such a there's tons of workshops that have like brains behind them, they have like a brain behind them. Um, the truth is that I I have so much to talk about that I don't know how to arrange it right now in a manner that's prepared for... We can always fix the, the filming and everything. In the previous show, for example, the first thing you said to us was, Start with that, that you need to talk about the nature of man. We're starting from far. What we went through in the conversation, first of all, we go over it in the workshop. That's clear. To strengthen what we heard. And repeat the fact that if a person hears it, he begins to repeat what he hears, and he hears it from other people, and they correct themselves. It takes a lot of hours of workshops until we reach, until we get to practical solutions that don't talk about the material, but about the relations between us which includes all the shapes, famous shapes, all things we need to develop between us above our ego, also in the way we talk, in the way we move, in the way we look, in the way we hear. We try to talk with our eyes shut, we block our ears and we start to look at each other, what can we fix by looking at one another, etc. In other words, to draw a person out to the form of connecting. There's many exercises showing how if we give to each family a sentence, if a two-year-old in the house brings the present, how can we persuade our little ones that they're supposed to make pee-pee here? How not to talk with moves, but with our tongue, how you can express something. We need to give a person, it's not drills, it's learning how to 
express his natural inclination to others for connecting, which is the new education, actually, but we never received previously. And to help him get it out of himself and to know how to play by himself. There's a desire to rise above my current. A lot of conditions have to happen for us to be ready to do that, to see ourselves at a side. And I see that the man exists above him. I look at him, I look at myself like a psychologist. I'm checking myself. And how I can, despite all my ear through the opposite of it. Precisely. That helps a person help himself, even to the extent that he can go through. Let's say I see you as my daughter. So how will I treat you? With warmth, with patience. I don't see you as a woman, I see you as my daughter. I don't think how to take advantage of you. Brother, I need to look after, make sure you're good. You know, there's Yetzia here. These are exercises that you can in which a person, it's a process where a person breaks himself inside. Starts to relate to others around him differently, parts in himself. Suddenly he discovers that he can view others in a different way. Like my father. This one's like my father. This one's like my baby. This one's like my baby. Where the ego shows us good relations of. This way we can relate to people who are complete strangers or even that we hate. Person starts to see people differently. This is my father. That's because the ego gives positive formats. So in order for me to relate to other strangers like this, I need to 72 hours a day. So exercises, exercises. Now I'm talking to you. Like I talked to my little kid, how can you? I'm with you in a circle. And this is how I need to talk to you. I can, my son is younger, so I can treat you like a son. But outside the circle, we're not talking about outside the circle, we're playing, we're inside the exercises, like the game of rules, but it's a game that goes on for a long time, every day, an hour, what difference does it make? But this is a habit that becomes the second habit. Suddenly I feel what I buy inside the circle is people start to be very close to me. And I'm buying from you again in two months. And we get into all kinds of other circles. Because I don't really care who I'm with. I just try to see ahead of me 
How to relate to others positively. Everyone who puts others down is putting himself down. I don't read anyone properly. I just read my ego. I'm ignoring my ego, so I'm treating him in a neutral manner. So how do I develop a positive... Uh, form for him, this positive form that I have to develop. Do I have to try to think about it in a positive manner when I, in our interactions here between us? What do I have to draw for myself? No, no, no. We'll see, we'll see later. We'll go in in a natural way. I'm not talking about later, I'm talking about now. No, throughout the exercise, we don't know each other. We're just like we are. I look at you without any previous format. There's no such thing. So the first stage in the exercise is to actually, let's say three of us are in this circle. That's how I like Nitsa and I like you less. We're all very special people here. I see everyone in the circle. Everyone's special. She's so smart. He's so special. He's so fast. Morning. Let's find 20 good words about the person in front of us. You know how difficult that is? Truly? Truly good words? Let's say I work in the organization with you for five years. Maybe you more and her maybe also more. By the way, here in this exercise in the environment, there's a situation where you're my manager and we're in the same circle. We're not separating things. Everything is connected. Let's say you're my manager. It no. doesn't matter at what level. It doesn't matter if you're executive or in charge of a little group. Uh, you like Nisa and you don't like me. That's the relation I get, the attitude I get from the boss. Now we're sitting down in a circle. You don't like me, I don't like you. Let's go stage by stage, so we'll manage to implement it. I feel you want to say to me, you f fell down. We're talking about us, but it could be other people. But fate, it worked out that we're in the same circle. To our joy and sorrow, it turns out that I'm in a circle with someone I don't like. I close my eyes, and what do I try to do? I ignore everything, lead me through the game. What does it mean, game? What's the first stage? Like, I'm you, and we're, we're playing chess now. We're now, we're enemies. Father and son plays chess. They play very seriously. Not a father that does it uh, once in a while. We're one against the other, not a father that's uh, letting his son win. Does it cause some um, distance between us? God forbid. It strengthens the connection. I played a lot of chess with my son in the hospital when he had an accident, and it really strengthened our relationship. So why not here? But you're not my you're not my son. You're my boss. I hate you. I want you to go out to pension. But that was before we sat down in the circle. But I'm not in that situation yet. I'm saying let's organize the actions, so I'll flow with you in the exercise. So first of all, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel that you're demanding from me to realize this exercise, that actually I need to erase, I don't know her and I don't need you. So let's start from afar. 
You're all sitting, but let's not change it. But you're the boss and we are your workers. I need to be the host. So we have a third person that's our, our leader, our boss. So you start from afar. Close your eyes and don't say anything for a minute. Even closing your eyes is hard in front of those people. Okay, we'll get through it. Now let's all clap together. One, two, three, I'm a Hashverosh. I get you out of all kinds of previous connections. I do these exercises to make you into kids. Something very simple and primitive and straight. Close one eye and look at everyone. Now the other eye. Great. Now everyone show the other how many fingers he has. There's thousands of exercises. There's nothing in it just to confuse you. It's really infantile. It's childish. Does it mix the ego up? Yes. It shows that there's no connection, no work, no status. I'm this, you're that, nothing. These exercises, and there's lots of exercises like that. Of that belong to kids, that first of all, everyone does it together, and the fact that each and every one does it in a way that they're obligated, and people do it in a way that they're playing, acting. So this equalizes us. And the fact that we do it all together connects us. Gradually, we start like this. We start with silly things on purpose? Yes, of course. OK, great. We're all like embarrassed. It's unpleasant. For everyone, it's unpleasant. It passes, it passes. You see that it passes. Afterward, everyone's screaming, or everyone says out loud some sentences, good morning, and it has to be together. All kinds of things like that. If we're talking about situations like you said, we have to start from afar. I explain to you very lightly what's happening, about what kind of interactions there are at work. There's a knife in the back first thing in the morning here. This is how we progress more and more to some inner softening. A person is confused. In each of us, there's a child, and we need to awaken him. Yes? That's it. By the way, what did you like to play when you were five? Football. Uh, half a day, every day, I played football. How did you play? I was great with other friends, but the main thing for you was to be the star. I also enjoyed that they were strong and we were good strong. Being excellent was the main thing. So now Nitsa will explain what she used to play when she was five. Each and every one will explain. And you get into the age of five. We're already closer. We're already more equal. What work? I've, I've forgotten what work is. I'm here with you in the playground, in the yard. With the, She's there with the dolls, and we're with your football or something. Let a person be free, not obligated, not stressed. We're not uh, separating him from others and arranging him according to status and rank and salary. A child. And now let's continue in our exercise. Let's say this is the warm-up to release stress. Now again I'm saying, 
You can talk with your hands, you can do pantomime, no talking, explain to us what you want to do this evening or this weekend, etc. Everyone is making an effort and they're acting with their hands and with their facial expressions. Yes? Show there yourself laughing or crying. I see up till now you didn't ask them anything about their work during that weekend in the evening, what happened in their childhood and your free time. But don't tell me, but express it in pantomime. Now pretend that you're laughing, you're crying. You know, your mouth right up to your ears and the opposite. Laughing face, uh, crying face, serious face, that your angry face, loving face. And we go to the game. The game is let each of us tell the other a compliment. Okay. Give me a compliment. But with the facial expression and everything that you hate me, say something. We'll try to get you out of all your stuff, but let's say, like we say, not now. Let's say we don't know each other at all. Let's imagine. That's the exercise. We don't know each other. We have people sitting in front of us that we don't know. We went to some vacation, in some hotel, at some beach somewhere, abroad somewhere, and we met. We're sitting, we don't know each other. People who are total strangers, completely. This is what we need to get into here in the circle, get into it. So I don't know you, and I don't know her. I see you. Now what? Let's say I'm in it. How do you feel with us? Free. Nothing's stressing you. You don't owe anyone anything. You have a wonderful smile. It's possible somehow to look and see what's good in the person. I don't know if I could do it before, but it's a little bit easier. But you're not you. I'm imagining that I don't know you. You have a nice jacket. It's special. I see you're an important person. You can act, you can see the other person in a completely different manner, but not different manner. But you're not my boss anymore. You wanted me to go out to pension. Let's say after pension, we meet in some place after I retire. Despite you having all these unpleasant memories, suddenly we're together in some place, in the middle of the beach, we sit down, we play backgammon or chess, whatever, and we talk. There's nothing between us. It's just regular life. We need to talk about work. Maybe you're also no longer at work. It's possible to rise above and move away from all these forms. It's possible to build all kinds of exercises. And then what? You brought me to a place of strangeness, cleaning, cleaning this bad feeling I have. I'm building in you all kinds of formats, new formats of relating to people, like an actor. Now I need to cry. 
I need to be happy and hug you. I'm not even relating to you. I'm relating to my role, how I need to act now. How I need to act. That's why I'm saying once with a bitter face, once with a happy face, once with a pleasant face, once with a scary face. In that, that you are doing all kinds of exercises like this, you're giving a person an ability to be above his ego, not to be glued to it like skin on meat. Scrape the meat from the skin from the meat, separate them. It's impossible to be inside this animal nature that you were given, developed in you, and you're always remaining in it. It's not you, it's what you were made of. We want to get you out of it so that you'll be able to be something else. But you'll prefer afterwards. But to disconnect from it, you must. Otherwise, you are always, always inside what they did to you, and you're, you're really a poor guy. This is how you end your life. Of course, the parents are guilty, school, the media, and everything. All that is right, and your life, maybe you got beat up a lot. It's all correct. But that is what connects you. That's what ties you. We want to make you some kind of vacation from yourself, if it's possible to even say it's you. These exercises are meant to allow you to see yourself from above, from the side at least, and decide, do I want this form or not? How many people come to me and ask, how can I get rid of this and this and this? I have these problems at home and work and my criticism and the pressure. The, the people around me feel this pace of life that I demand for myself and this precision that I demand of others and criticism that I, with my wife and my kids, everyone hates me, nobody can stand me. I also can't stand myself. I also want to be freer. I want to be simple. I want to feel more convenient. I have uh, diabetes. I have blood pressure. Help me. So I help. I help a person to get out of what, what was put into him in his childhood, his education, maybe he was uh, repressed. I help him get out of it. And he can check later what he wants, but I want to give him all kinds of different forms and let him choose which scene he wants to be in, which type of life. Maybe it's really a place to mention the benefits, advantages. A person, before he does something like this, it's not easy. People are closed off. It'll be difficult for them. But when you explain the advantages, then first of all, there's the advantage for the individual. Many people will say about themselves that they feel this heaviness and seriousness that's costing them their health. And there's like a feeling of we've lost our love of life, our motivation. We're stuck in our own prisons. I want to feel myself flying in the air. Is there something better than that, than feeling life like that? And I'm not capable. I'm always stressed out. Look how I'm all stressed out. I have to all the time be ready for war. Why? I'm not enjoying it. 
I'm not enjoying any moment in my life. This is what we have to explain to people. This is how they buy life in these exercises. Because they're getting freedom from themselves. This is called going on vacation. Going on vacation in the workplace, it sounds interesting. Normally we have to go very far for that, and it doesn't help us. So let's go back a bit. On the one hand, there's the advantages to the person himself, that he starts to feel he's earning his life from scratch. He's starting to break these old formats old shapes. And the other advantage, the other benefit where we started the organization and the ability to think together is the second advantage. It's for himself and it's also for the environment, the family and everything, all his circles. And by starting to feel others and coming out of himself, but it's sort of just uh, de-stressing at the moment. And what happens next? It's not um, relaxation from the previous situation. It's how we dress on ourselves the best format for health, for success, for everything. The most optimal form. I didn't understand. What role am I dressing on myself? How am I going to function so that I'll feel good? We're talking about from the side of the ego, of course, that I'll feel good with everyone in all cases until the end of my life and until 120 and no less because I'm going to live in a healthy way. Now I'm coming with uh, synergy and harmony with everyone, with nature. Why shouldn't I live until 120 in a healthy, happy, healthy way? So what was the question that you asked? How should I function after I relax myself from the previous stressful, egoistic situation? How now do I accept this new form on myself. So what do I need to do now? The next exercises. The next exercises are already to give compliments to everyone. So this will be like the new form, giving compliments. The opposite of before. I don't have any way to build something else. The ego is a help made, helping me to build the opposite of him. I don't need to imagine to myself some role to drop on myself and how I need to behave with others. I simply take my ego and transform it. Let's imagine that me and my manager come. I take all my hatred that I have toward him. And what do I do? It doesn't work directly. What do you mean it doesn't work directly? It doesn't work in that manner. I'm not saying about me toward him, but me with myself. You said that before also, that you're not even talking about the other person, but rather the role that you have to do. I don't care how much I looked at him positively, negatively, I don't care. I care how I now do the opposite of my nature. Can it be expressed in the compliment exercise? So explain it to me because I don't understand how. These exercises come to show me all kinds of forms, all these possibilities in relation to the 
to the public. But now I'm in all kinds of exercises with others. Apart from compliments, I'm canceling myself to them. Like we said before, I appreciate everyone as the greatest of the generation, but in other words, as great, as successful, as a special person, because of course he's special. Now we are beginning to raise each person up. This is the next stage, the new good form that I'm going to live happily with until 120. Now you need to raise each one up by raise everyone up in my eyes. That's one exercise. Another exercise is to minimize myself my value, my self-importance compared to him. I compliment each person. I tell how much I praise each person. I tell how much I want to be connected to them and hope I will be accepted into their group, into their gang. The extent that I feel that they're very special people, all of them together, each of them on their own and together, and that I want to be integrated in them, to be influenced by them, influenced by their feeling and brain, exercises of integration. Now let's talk between us. What kind of impression we get together? From after talking together, and each person expressed themselves after all these exercises, what happened between us? What kind of connection? The warmth, the mutuality, help, understanding, Closeness, participation, to the extent that we feel ourselves connected together in mutual responsibility. The extent that it gives us a feeling of concern for everyone. Meaning now we have reached some new existence that's been created between us. That the power of this common existence that exists between us now is a common plate on the on the table is the general collective asset of all of us, belongs to all of us. We are all concerned with it. If we will create such relations between the workers in this office or business, we will make very big achieve very big results. In this way, we'll correct all our work relations. We'll save a lot. And we'll go on from there. So that we'll learn to continue with it in the workplace. Uh, habit becomes second nature and also in home and everywhere else. We're actually building some self-education that we are educating ourselves through the connection between us, that we learn from these mutual exercises how to improve and to reach a new feeling of life. Give us homework for the next meeting. Homework to try to try to at home to see everyone in a great way, in a nice way, without any criticism. 
but rather to behave toward everyone in my home like they would want us to be. You also mean at home and at work. That's the homework for the, till the next meeting. You want us to write down our impressions and tell you next time? Yes, we'll talk about it next time. Thank you very much, Rav Lightman. It was fascinating. Thank you, Nietzsche. And thank you for being with us. I hope you wrote down your homework. Try next time to speak to everyone nicely, not criticize anyone, but act towards others as you'd like them to act toward you. Good luck to us. All the best till next time. Bye.